Welcome to Canada's podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Schneider Electric, supporting Canadian businesses with innovative energy management and automation solutions. Schneider Electric, your digital partner for sustainability and efficiency. Hi, this is Celine Williams hosting from Ontario for Canada's podcast. My guest today is Mike Ward, who is a Canadian born Austin based entrepreneur and investor, and who currently holds the title of CEO at Anthem IQ. Well, uh, welcome, Mike. Happy to have you here. This is great. Thank you uh, for having me on today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Um, I'd love to know a little bit about your journey to becoming the CEO at Anthem IQ and this entrepreneurial and investor you know, journey that you've been on over the past that, that took you from Toronto to Austin. Let's be real. That's a big part. Yeah, of this. There you go. There you go. From the snow to the warmth. <laughs> uh, it's um, it's been a journey. It has been a, I started my career back in Toronto uh, after studying actually stateside uh, for school, but wanted to come home. I think uh, a lot of people, when you're born and raised in Southern Ontario, you live in Southern Ontario um, have your career in Southern Ontario. And so it just felt natural, came back and uh, started my career in a fintech company. <clears throat> so an alternative to the bank, uh, foreign exchange, international payments, helping small businesses and consumers move money cross border and uh, had a great run up there. Uh, we actually became a schedule one bank, actually uh, the 22nd schedule one bank in Canadian history. And so just got exposure and experience for a young age that, um, that was kind of rare and just something that I was in the deep end pretending to know what I was doing, to be honest. And, uh, and so got some leadership and some management opportunities that took me uh, to my next gig, which was a company out of Australia, Sydney, Australia, and they had some private equity backers. And I joined them, moved to San Francisco to run Europe and North America for them. And we uh, took that company public in 2013 and, and did another gig uh, with a company called World First, and uh, and sold that to Ant Financial in in two thousand uh, end of two thousand and eighteen. And so my career through all those companies and positions was more on the front office side, so more on the commercial side of the business. Felt very comfortable with sales, marketing, uh, with those companies, trading, customer service, customer experience, so on. Um, had a lot of opportunities to work with finance, compliance, and other departments mm. um, in, in the back end of a, of a business, but got an early opportunity to be exposed to the leadership C-suite positions uh, of those entities and then take them through a liquidity event. And so for me, it was just one of those right place, right time. You put in the hard work, you know, sometimes luck happens and um, I had a, had a very fortunate career that uh, went Toronto, San Francisco, and then San Francisco for the last six years down here to Austin, Texas. And uh, it's it's been uh, an industry like fintech, which obviously disrupted the financial services um, industry, which has been by, I guess, ran by the incumbents, the big banks, the big insurance, the big, you know, um, investment companies and so on. And, and so these, these disruptors were able to come in and make a mark and create some noise. And so I've always loved that. I've always loved watching uh, something that has been done a certain way, certain model, and just going, no, that's, that's archaic. That, they can't continue that way. You know, we need to move on and, and change it to be different. And so after leaving World First uh, at the end of 18, when the company um, was sold, it was more of a commitment from a work-life perspective. I have two daughters down here, my wife. For, for me, it was usually two to three weeks a month. It was international travel. It was never really domestic. And um, the commitment was that I wasn't going to do that again. And so got into the position to be making investments into entities and advising and in a lot of cases passive, but sometimes active. And so for us, uh, Austin's a great market to be doing that in right now. There's a lot of this going on uh, in this market. And two good friends of mine uh, started a company in the commercial real estate space with backgrounds in commercial real estate. And one and had a background in technology. And uh, I was originally an investor in that business and um, an advisor. And then took over as CEO of the company that you mentioned, Anthem IQ, uh, which we're operating here today. So I love that you said that 
you know, companies and, and that are disrupting industries that that is something that is really appealing to you and you've, you have a natural affinity for. And so I'm curious, how is Anthem IQ disrupting the commercial real estate, commercial real estate, right? How is it disrupting that industry? Because I, you know, I do think that there are that the real estate world in general is ripe for some disruption um, Mm. beyond, you know, you can look at realtor.com where it's like, oh, I can see a listing online, which seems to be as disrupted as it gets these days. Yeah, Yeah. no, that's great. It's uh, prop tech is, is the industry of the technology around residential, commercial and so on. And there, there's definitely been a lot more momentum in those industries compared to some. I mean, it's surprising that it hasn't gone that way. Uh, again, a lot of probably focus because the there's just a few incumbents that would really, an MLS as an example, yep. would really control a lot of that industry as it pertains to technology or data, which ultimately you need to be um, serviced by technology. And so um, think of Zillow, think of uh, platforms like that. Uh, so residential side, people are a lot more comfortable searching for a home, maybe even trying to uh, conduct a transaction on their home without a agent um, or participate alongside an agent because they have that capabilities and that functionality at their fingertips. Now we've created that for commercial real estate. So commercial real estate, and I'll just I'll give you a simple example your company up there and wanted a new office space in Toronto, you'd reach out to one of the broker shops up there, maybe a large one, JLL, CBRE, Cushman Wakefield, something like that. And you'd hire a broker to say, we need 5,000 square feet of office space. We want it just off Front Street or Bay Street downtown. And and they would go out and they would search the market for you. They'd come back with a handful of options. Let's call it 20 options. And they would put those options into nice PowerPoints and Excel sheets for the financial sides. And each one of those options have a flyer that the asset owners put together, you know, displaying images of maybe the parking or the gym or the lobby and so on. And, and maybe they have a virtual tour of stuff. And so you would get this inbox bombarded with all this information and saying, okay, here's the 20 spots here. I've tried to make it as pretty as possible, but it's all static. It's all multiple attachments, potentially even in a drop box because of how many um, pieces of material they would want to get in front of you. And so then you're sitting on your computer going, okay, does this flyer match this lease space with these financials? And, and there's not kind of a single place to actually see and understand which one of these locations, because you want to narrow those 20 spots down to three to five. You want to go to tour a handful of those. And then once you tour those, you want to put some proposals in and obviously take it to lease and execute to move in. Our platform allows on a digital interface, a broker to work with you to go and find an office space in this example here. And so basically go from search to sign lease on a single platform. And it's amazing to me. I mean, again, as I explained, my background's been fintech. So I've lived this for 15 years now um, and probably was still not one of the first ones doing it in fintech. It has done, started before me, but you come into the CRE commercial side of, of real estate and they are still doing big printed materials for a tour. They're still loading up your inbox like I've described. And um, many companies have probably internally try to build some technology, but uh, we believe we truly are first to market to allow a tenant rep and their customer to find an office space on a platform. They'll still go tour. They'll still go um, you know, visit the local streets and, and neighborhood that it may be in, but they'll be able to conduct everything without having to download, print, save in a folder, any material. And um, we launched in February of uh, this past year. We uh, have had tremendous success actually both in both countries. In the US where we originally launched, we we're already in Canada as well. And we're helping the tenant rep give a totally different customer experience, uh, which is what really allows them to win and be successful as if the customer is happy. Um, I think that's really interesting. And, and I mean, even from a, and this may be a difference between Canada and the States, but you know, there's no single platform that I know of here where you can go from start to signing a contract on a platform and for real yeah. estate for even as a consumer, right. As a, yeah. as a, as a house, a 
house owner, house prospective house buyer. So the fact yeah. that it's all in one for any form of real estate, I think is really interesting um, and con convenient. Let's call it, let's call it what it is. It's really convenient. Yeah. You are, and you know, what's interesting. I gave you the example of, of residential and we talked about Zillow. We believe and we see someone's not going to go find office space and try to do it on their own. Right. It's too, there's too many moving parts. There's too much uh, financial and leverage and capitalization and a lot that goes into this. This is not like why well, I'm comfortable saying my house is this and what I want is that. And, and so maybe people are feeling a little more comfortable on the residential side to try it without an agent. No, we're saying your access as a client to see this platform, it's only through an agent. Right. But if you can't conduct all of this in a single platform, if we, you can conduct bits and pieces and you have to come in and out of it, it it's not going to be set up for success. And so we spent a lot of time before we took it to market to build that end-to-end -end solution so that it allows the simplicity of what is a long, at times can be long and complicated sales process and, and, and decision process to move that. Um, onto a single platform is just what's allowing us to succeed and in, in win where we are today. Well, and I would imagine that for the brokers that are out there, this is like a dream come true that they can do it all in one platform and, and they don't have to be managing multiple emails, multiple documents, multiple this, multiple that. Yeah. 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 It's two things we're seeing, you know, I'll give you an example of uh, one of our co-founders down here. Chris, who's a broker in Austin and a fantastic one. That's actually the first person I met moving to Austin because I relocated 50 employees here with one of those fintech companies. And so, you know, we use the example, Chris could always figure out how to do 50 deals in a year uh, and being as successful as he was, but how to do 51 was always very challenging. This platform cuts out the administrative activity, it reduces it significantly so that he can, we believe in a given year, do about a hundred deals. And so a rep broker now being able to be more successful because of that. Also, our current market share would say this is for first users, first adopters, we're going to win this way. But over time, we hope all brokers are going to be using this, but the brokers using it are able to win deals that they normally wouldn't. Because hmm. go back to that example. I come to you and pitch you the technology platform or someone walks in with a bunch of printouts and email attachments. They're going to tell you that there's differentiations between what one can do and one can't. You know, I'm better at negotiating. I have better market rate. I have better insights. I better, they're going to pitch you the same. Except for the fact that one has this technology and one has this archaic way of doing it. Who are you going to choose? And so we're giving this tool that it just allows that administrative reduction in this solution that's just winning business for them that they haven't experienced before. And so it's um, we're very fortunate to be in the spot we are at the time we are um, with this platform. At Schneider Electric, we empower Canadian businesses to utilize energy and resources efficiently. Schneider Electric, the future of energy. So I'm really curious because I think that, you know, after the year and a half that we've experienced that there's, there are changes happening in, in the way that people work, how they work, where they work, all of that is kind of yep. in flux. Um, and if you've, I'm sure you've read the headlines, you know, there's been talk of how it's going to affect commercial real estate specifically and empty offices and et cetera, et cetera. And I'm curious because you're in this arena, what trends are you seeing or what do you think is going to happen in the next few years? Yeah, it's quite the topic these days, right? And I think it's, I think we're starting to see a lot more signs and data to support the future versus what would have been a lot more assumptions and predictions maybe earlier part of COVID. Hmm. But what we are seeing in a handful of the key markets in the States, this is not just an Austin situation, which um, just seems to be booming, is people are going back to the office uh, in majority of the cases. People are going back to the office. Maybe they are working some type of model that would say we're going to go 
three days a week or four days a week or have some type of rotation with that. And, but some of the stats that or at least our state side that are reporting is a lot of businesses are dealing with almost 40% attrition of employees. And, you know, replacing an employee can be quite costly, right? A lot more than actually paying that single employee. And, and again, there's stats to support that. But why they're moving? They're moving because they don't feel as loyal to the entity. There's not the collaboration, the engagement, and the, and the relationship in the business. And so when they're sitting at home siloed, independent, constant activity is via a Zoom or Google Meet or whatever it may be, when someone comes knocking on the door or they're potentially just bored and searching of what's out there, they're much quicker and easier to jump and join other entities. I'll offer you X dollars more in a compensation package. Okay, I'll go there. I don't have to move. I can do it now from here. And so what companies that we're seeing either in our platform or just through the relationships of, of the industry is that they're going, no, 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 I want office space. I want our people to be back there. And so a lot of thought was, well, maybe they're going to cut the amount of office space. Well, that, that means they're pretty packed in. They actually still like the size of the office space because they want to be more spread out, right? Um, healthier distance uh, between versus maybe that old boiler room or that you know, condensed uh, program that they would have had in office spaces before. And so for New York, Chicago, LA, Austin, we are just seeing record deals, 10-year, 12-year leases, massive amounts of space. Um, by firms small and large. And, um, and that's not to say it's 100%, but I think some numbers that we've been reading were 90 to 95% back to where we were pre-COVID for the amount of commercial real estate office activity. And uh, I think it just, it's healthier. It's healthier for our nature. I mean, not to say you can't work from home if you need to, or you don't have a hybrid of working from home, but I think majority of the people we talk to, I, I can speak for ourselves. We love being in the office. And I love to know that I don't have to be in the office five days a week, but I love being around the people. There, uh, yeah, I can't replace the collaboration, the pass-by conversations, the drop-ins, um, the ability to execute and, and to be successful, I think is in more of this model. And we're seeing that. Um, Major companies, Google, you know, announced seven billion in commercial real estate that they're investing. Uh, other firms, similar type numbers. So, the original talk of early stage COVID is the industry's dead. People won't go back to the office. To some um, are still haven't gone back yet, but are committing to. And I know there will be a percentage of them that that won't. They'll go, hey, that's the, such an expensive opex line. And we want to save that and our people want to work from home and, and whether that stays long-term or not, I'd be surprised. But I think majority of people, majority of the businesses have a program hybrid or whatever it may look like of going back to the office. And depending on locations, we know Toronto has been locked down you know, a lot longer than most, but I think Toronto will start to see that too, as they come out uh, you know, to some of the stages that places like Austin have been for a few months now. And it's, I think that there's, it'll definitely be interesting to see where the headlines go and what ends up happening. Cause I think to your point, there's what we've heard might be different than the reality and the headlines may not always be <laughs> reflecting what people in the industry are seeing. And I think that at, you know, at the end of the day, it's about flexibility, right? Like companies are likely to have offices, if nothing else to offer flexibility for people because there will be people who going into the office makes sense and they want to do it. There'll be people who they will never want to commute again and they don't want that option. And having the flexibility inside of companies to have that option, I think is going to be the most important thing for the future. And I think what it will do is spread people out from the downtown cores of major cities, right? And, and I think I've heard it up there a little bit of, uh, one of the top three, top five banks, you know, starting to go, do we need the downtown office or could we put it in Mississauga or Burlington or Markham or wherever it may be and put surrounding areas? So now people that live 
you know, in the, in the surrounding GTA ability to commute is very different than if they had to go down back down to Bay street. And so I think we'll see a lot of that activity, which will simplify. And again, that doesn't mean that they have to go back five days a week. Maybe they still have a hybrid model in doing so. Um, But I think, like you said, what catches people's interest in headlines is it being different and extreme from what it is today. If the headline was it's going back to normal. How exciting is that headline, you know, versus the headline of going, the office will never be the same again. Few well, people read that and it's actual or, or have facts behind it. And I think that like all things, it'll be different for different people and different companies in different countries. Right. And I, it's easy to pull the catchy headline that's true of one thing, but it doesn't apply across the board. And we like to go, oh, well, that's the truth now, as opposed to, yeah. sure, that's going to be true for some people. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, and in, in tying it back to Anthem, I mean, ultimately, I think what people want to know is where they work. Um, they have obviously the, the support, the infrastructure, the location. Uh, when they go in, that it's an enjoyable place to work, that they've got the amenities, right? That, that's very important. That's been important for you know a few decades now. What's the gym look like? Is there a kitchen? You know, all the way down, do they have do they have drinks on tap? Do they have beer on tap in, in office, right? It's it's had to become quite creative these days. And so um, a platform like ours allows people to visit, see, get insights. Um, get that internal understanding of uh, this is where I'm going to go spend a good chunk of my week, uh, even in a hybrid model. And, and so they want to know that it's going to be good for them, good for their employees. And uh, I think there's um, platforms out there in prop tech like Zillow, like Redfin, like others that have that have allowed that ability at one's fingertips as much as they know about it or not, just to feel like they're involved and on a journey. And so that's what we've created. And um, I think we will see a lot of success in this industry for, for years to come. A lot of people still doing office, industrial, retail, whatever it may be, um, even with disruptions in all of those, right? Uh, the Amazon's causing a lot of it in all of those. But uh, it's it's one that will be um, important for, for decades to come and technology will change how those businesses are operated. And tech, I mean, technology is always going to change all the things and we can't even predict what's next anymore. So I, you know, I always want to ask, what do you think is next for, for you and for the company? And I also recognize that in asking that there's so many unknowns in technology and I'm still good. Yeah. What do you think? No, it's great. Like, it's great. I think, the company holds. I think there's a few things that are near term. Um, a business today still needs a few other platforms to manage the front office, the brokers, CRM, <clears throat> business intelligence, um, commission tracking, the different tools out there. So we are adding to our platform, CRM, business intelligence and commission tracking. So that again, it's a single location for a broker to operate their business, to operate what they need to do in a day and ultimately to service a customer all on that single platform. So for us, it's quite the feature sets to add, um, to uh, build a CRM could be its own entity, right? To build a CRM on top of a transaction management system, um, commission tracking and so on is quite the program. So our team of engineers and our product team are top notch and and fantastic to build that out. We think we will... Uh, through this, have a lot of data, a lot of information of what's going on in the market. So back to the point of how things are heading and where they're heading, and and you know what are people going to do as it pertains to office space or ideas like that. We're going to have the factual um, stats to talk about because we're seeing it. It's it's conducting in our system, so we'll be able to report on that. And I think for us, it's to gain majority of the market in the U.S. in Canada. I think we have global opportunities with the partners we already have because they're global firms. And so how office space is done or the data or the metrics of the negotiations may be a little different in Europe versus Asia versus Australia. But we think we could be a global firm with this. And um, and we're first to market. So we know someone's coming. So we got to run fast. Uh, you don't stay first to market long. 
Uh, there's a lot of money out there these days, VC, private equity, strategic investors. There's a lot of money on the sidelines. And so a lot of people want them to pump into a movement like prop tech. And so for us, it's to run fast and, and to be big very quickly. Yeah, very cool. Um, well, before we wrap this up, I'm, I'd like to, you know, I'm going to ask the question I always ask, which is, is there anything that we didn't get to that you want to bring up or something you want to emphasize from the conversation before we say our goodbyes? No, I think it's, it's been great. I love, um, it's actually a little homesick time back into Canada and talking about some of those neighborhoods and areas back up there. Uh, it's been almost a decade since I left, but yeah, I think for me, the thing that I always compare uh, quite a bit to is, you know, America, yes, is 10 times larger as per population and so on. But, you know, what one can do in, in a single state um, is still quite impressive. Canada, to me, kept, kept giving me that comparison. Like what a business can do in Canada is quite successful. It's big. It's, you know, 36, 38 million people, whatever it may be. And um, and so I just, I love, you know, knowing that we are up there now conducting business. I, I love how much momentum and potential we have up there. Yes. Um, stateside is, is bigger to that, but I mean, we could be an entity alone, uh, up in Canada. And so I guess my challenge to the listeners out there and the people that are thinking about maybe conducting business, maybe starting their own business, maybe scaling their business, is make sure you, you don't uh, leave behind, you know, what's at home because there's there's a lot there, and uh, but also don't be shy to go cross border if you want to. I mean, it's it's big, um, but there's a, there's a lot of potential out there, and um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see more and more Canadian companies coming stateside. I'm excited to see more state, you know, companies like ours coming coming up to Canada. So it'll bring me home yeah. uh, quite a few times throughout the year. So yeah. that's just a thought that I'll leave with everyone. Well, I, I mean, I think I love it. There's possibility everywhere, right? Like let's all well, walk away with that. There's possibility everywhere. And let's, let's keep yeah. putting that out into the world. Um, thank you, love Mike, it. for joining me today. Uh, I appreciate your time. Um, our listeners and viewers can find out more about Anthem IQ at anthemiq.com. There will be links in the show notes. Um, and for those of you who are listening and watching, thank you for listening to Canada's podcast, like comment and subscribe to all our channels to get the latest podcasts from entrepreneurs across Canada. This podcast is brought to you by Schneider Electric, supporting Canadian businesses with innovative energy management and automation solutions. Schneider Electric, your digital partner for sustainability and efficiency.